we have the Radiant. And we have the Dire. Check out that awesome Snapfire and Oracle. Oh man, some good skins this time. We have an intro. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an ability draft with me, Carmenite. Uh, my buddy Stargate played this game with me. He's Bane. He's got some stuff. I played this game. I'm Oracle. I'm a right-click Oracle. I, I don't know if this was the right choice. Um, it didn't. It didn't go so well. So you know, maybe not. I don't know. Um, shout outs this game to Trenzalor for having an awesome build, which is worth making a video about, and also to uh, this Muerta player. What's your name? Zoran. Zoloran. Xenon. Zoran. Kasorin. I don't know how to pronounce X's anymore, guys. Zorin. We'll go with Zorin. Ooh, Stargate is going to join and watch himself and me get wrecked again. So this draft was really interesting. Here, let's, let's get to some action. Looks like action for the top river. Uh, this draft was really interesting because it pretty much transitioned in the last round from a whole bunch of do-nothing right-click to some actually pretty good builds. I wonder if Io had committed forward, if they could have maybe CC'd the Snapfire a second time and locked in first blood. It's better than that bounty rune. Uh, that's us, that's them, that's them, that's them. So, no, two of them, us, two of them, them. Split the bounty runes, no first blood. Kind of a boring start. Anyways, we had a game where it really looked like we were going to have a bunch of do-nothing builds. Like... This guy had Slight of Fist and Blade Fury and, like, last pick Searing Chains. Uh, this Muerta last picked Overload for some slow. Um, I last picked Lucent Beam for a soft stun. Mini stun, anyway. And late picked Ghoul Frenzy for some slow. Like, there are a bunch of, a bunch of builds in this draft. They were, like, all set to do absolutely nothing. And then they continued being all set up to do absolutely nothing. Just kidding. Most of them turned into some pretty interesting builds. Uh, we will have to see how this game goes. Yeah, here's another one where he had, like, damage and lifesteal and mobility. And then last pick got some slow. Um, I will go through the builds one at a time. But it was a pretty interesting draft where uh, the CC came out super late. It's usually, like, high competition for CC. And in this case, it was super high competition for right-click stuff. Um, which is generally a bad sign when, like, everyone on your team is going right-click. But it actually turned into some really good builds. So let's do the hero chase thing and talk about some of these builds. And it looks like we're starting with Faceless Void. I guess I had him selected. That's fine with me. Whoop hop, whoop hop. Do we have... Uh, just kidding. We have no one. Yeah, I get notifications from something, and I'm not sure what they're coming from, and they're very distracting. All right, we've got a Faceless Void, and like I said, he's got two right-click things, Blade Dance and Feast. He's got Fire Remnant. Ooh, first Blood. By the Ogre Magi, followed by me dying. Tragic. It's like Ogre Magi and I go on the Ember that it's maybe an overcommit, because while we get him, Muerta's going to turn around and kill me, and Ogre's going to run for it. I thought maybe Ogre would help me some more, but he's totally out of gas. Maybe he could have thrown this grenade for me or something? I don't know. But that's a one for one, and we got the first blood, so that's a good trade. Anyway, this, uh, this faceless fight up here. He's got two good right-click abilities, a slow that no longer turns into a stun. Fire Remnant is just, like, magical mobility. That's a pretty solid build. Um, like I said, it looked like it was going to be do-nothing right-click. It turned into something pretty cool. Uh, playing position 5 and a support, we have Stargate. Um, I like crowd-control Death Ward. 
Like, this is this is a combo for getting kills. That is definitely something a P5 should be looking to do. Um, he can harass in lane with the brain sap. It's not my kind of build, but I think this is a solid support build. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Hey, speaking of Stargate, what? let me let me pause and get him in this game. Uh, Stargate is having technical difficulties and may join us eventually, but for the moment he doesn't have internet. So we'll just talk about him behind his back while he's not here. Uh, like I said, I think he's got a good build. It's a good support build. It's not like the craziest thing I've ever seen, but it seems solid. All right, across the river, top. We're going to save Io for last, and their other top hero this game is Marana. Currently getting pulled. Why is my hero chase following a range creep? Excuse me? Hello? Do I have to click on her up here to make this work? There we go. That seems better. That was weird. We have a Marana. And she has a do-nothing damage build. She attacks multiple targets. She attacks fast. She's hard to CC. I mean, she's got Murder Kisses, which does a nice chunk of damage to the whole team. But, like, no CC, no slow, no lockdown. 100% dependent on her friends for crowd control. And I just don't feel like this is uh, necessarily the best build. Like, the damage side of it is fine. It's nothing to write home about, honestly. Overcharge and Gunslinger is, like, it's pretty good, but not the best I've ever seen. Meanwhile, bottom, Ember Spirit just died. Let's see what happened there. I'd like to see Ember Spirit dying. I think that was me doing something right, maybe. Maybe Ogre doing something right. Unclear. Looks like Ogre does all of his stuff. So I stun and start auto-attacking. And, uh, yeah, looks like we just run him down. He got a little too close to the tower. Got blown up. That's, that's a good kill. All right, mid, we've got Storm Spirit, who has probably the most versatile build in this game with Ball Lightning Nightmare. Like, this is such a high-quality ambush combo. Enfeeble is very strong. Makes it easy to win trades. And then he's got Bash for some actual hard CC. Not that he can choose when it happens, but like at least this actually stuns. Pretty good chance to go off. It's up to 24%. Uh, this build could be very good with some attack speed, and it looks like, sure enough, he's going to go for Handomitis first. I like it. It's a good build. Uh, Snapfire is a Snapfire with Little Shredder. A, a plus. That's all you need. Um, also, a stun. Uh, some more right-click. And Chronosphere. So, uh, two stuns and two right-click abilities. This is an excellent build. Yeah, I like it a lot. wonder what's making him hesitate to pull the trigger on this Chronosphere. I feel like he could kill the Storm at any point right now. With the Chronosphere, especially since he's already a little bit low. Uh, and this being level 6 before the Storm is level 6, advantage is about to go away. Yeah, like right after the little shredder, he could pop Chronosphere, close distance, get on the other side of him even, and blow him up. But now he's level 6 and is about to have a shield rune, and he's just not going to die. Ah, opportunity missed. Speaking of dying, I think I just died bottom. So I extended a little bit. Didn't feel like that much too much. But uh, Muerto with the Bloodlust... Overload charge, time walk, overload charge. Got the slows on me. Amber Spirit. Brought the Blade Fury damage and cleaned up with a Sleight of Fist, and I died. Um, so this is another build that was like, okay, so he's got Relocate so we can get the Bites. Cool. Ability. Two excellent damage abilities. Sleight of Fist and Blade Fury are both super strong. They also both function off right click, so this build has some truly exceptional right click. And then, last pick, he picked up Searing Chains, which turned Sleight of Fist into excellent CC. So, this turned into a really strong build. Uh, Marsa, also, similar situation. Had Bloodlust, had Time Walk, had her ult. All these things do a ton of damage. Very good. 
totally do nothing right click though uh, until she picked up overload and suddenly she's got two instances of a very strong slow or three depending on if she gets attack uh, gets an attack in between pierce the veil and bloodlust which I'm sure she pulls off because she sure wrecks us sometimes. Um, also, check out that list of shard things. Front row, looks like Storm just died. What happened, Storm? I thought. Oh, did you get Chronosphere? I bet he gets Chronosphere. He's low. Does he come in tower range? Does Snapfire just randomly decide he's low enough? Yeah, he does. And that's a very easy kill. Uh, Alright, so... Both of the bottom laners have right-click carry builds. And... Yeah, they don't, they don't have another support. It's slightly a problem for them. Um, so, on our side, we've got Ogre Magi who has a totally legit P4 support build, which I greatly appreciate him having, but also he was fighting me for last hits all game, which was a bit of a problem. Not that he's not worthy of having last hits, but like, when you take a silence and a stun and a burn and a slow and a big disable, like, this is a support build. Don't, don't take the last hits in lane. Whatever else he did as a support was pretty good, but me being underfarmed when the big fights started happening was a real problem for our team. And I mean, he's at seven and zero. Uh, I'm at I'm at fifteen and one. It's not like he took a ton of the last hits, but he should be at like zero and seven instead of seven and zero. That would be so much better for us as a team. Anyway, um, I also have Omni Slash and Moonglaze first, some farm and some good right click. Followed by Ghoul Frenzy, which is some very soft CC. And last, Lucent Beam for some actual stun. So, like, I did the same thing everybody else did this game and got some good right click, and then eventually, very late in the draft, finally picked up some crowd control. If you want to see this draft, which was a very strange one, uh, find the link to Patreon in the description below. And I've got extended versions of all these videos over there with the draft and a post-game analysis, in case you're curious what happens before and after these things. Uh, I believe that leaves Io. And, oh man. Io has Tether Infest. Like, he's already got Tether going on this absolutely do-nothing Luna who's at full health because of him. Ah. What? What is there to say here? He's got to their infest. He's going to make somebody invincible. This build is absolutely bonkers. This is one of the things you find in ability draft where you're like, oh, maybe? Maybe Bash isn't the business. Oh, look at him. Actually doing support things. Wow. What do you think Ogre's doing right now? Is it pulling a big camp for me? No. All right. We're ten minutes in. Let's hit that net worth and then start getting some of the fights. Uh, looks like Faceless Void is having an excellent time farming up top. Um, I have no farm. Ogre has no farm. Uh, Ember Spirit is doing very mean things under the tower. He just killed Ogre. Here, let's uh, switch to free camera now that we're done talking about the lanes. Back that up just a little bit. I don't know. Was Ogre super? Oh, yeah. Ogre is pretty low and just hanging out under tower. Lucent Beam gets blocked by the Blade Fury, so I don't even stun for my Ogre. That's a pretty easy kill for them. Alright. So I can't help but notice that other than Faceless Void doing well, we just picked up a kill using that nice chase he's got from uh, Fire Remnant to get a second one. Pretty nice double kill top. Um, nobody else on my team is really doing that well. Our Snapfire mid is doing all right. <coughs> Where is our Snapfire mid? 
Ah, coming in behind the Storm Spirit. With the double damage. Oh, check out the setup. So mean. Um, I like how he has double damage and still popped Little Shredder, which completely turned off his double damage, but just got the kill anyway. Uh, that was a very well-placed Chronosphere. Nice job, Snap. All right, we're gonna start hitting this button and finding the fights as they come down. Looks like Action Top is next. Bane doing aggressive things, getting caught under the tower. Faceless Void goes in. Sets up the Remnant ahead of time to chase. Doesn't need it. There's still creeps under this tower, so he continues chasing the Io, who gets another Fates Edict in, but ends up going down. Turns out Feast is strong. Feast and crit on a capable right clicker is a strong build. Doesn't even need a slow because he has a really good support in lane. Wow. Hey, look, it's his target. All right, let's see if we can make this happen this time. Recording. Hello, it's a Stargate. A Bundabar. Hello. A Bundabar. Is that Yiddish also? No, no, that's German. Didn't sound very Yiddish. Uh, looks like you just got blown up mid. Oh no. And yep. Snapfire drops a Chronosphere that captures absolutely everyone, friends and enemies alike, and doesn't have the follow up to catch the. Oop. Uh. Oh. I was about to say he doesn't catch the Ember, but uh, Ogre Magi it's already the lit ember. the Ember on fire. Yep. I, I think the thing to tell your viewers about this game was. I, I don't feel like it was necessarily us playing poorly. And not necessarily to say the other team played poorly. We just didn't play together. I felt like every fight, I was either getting entrapped in a chrono like that one or abandoned in the fight. Yeah? That's how yeah. it felt. Uh, I feel like there was definitely some panic and run moments for sure. Uh, we've got um, Faceless Void farming the Ancients on the other side of the map, getting caught by Ember Spirit right now. So look at this, look at this. So, so Ogre took his sweet time getting over there. He was there first. He Is there pings an ogre? for us to yeah. go after. Yeah, or are we bottom. talking about bottom? Yeah, we were just going after that Muerta. Muerta. And Muerta got away. Why? Because the stunner <laughs> was drunk. Stunningly didn't show up in time. Fascinating. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna say right now it's six eleven. We're up two k gold. Faceless Void and Snapfire are well ahead on the farm. I am behind supports on farm. Uh, not a good start for me. To be fair, I just died a few times in lane. Uh, I'm I'm two three right now, so not my cleanest start ever. And I was a number of times fighting this Ogre Magi for last hits. And I think right about now, when I get the Witchblade, I can finally, like, start farming effectively. But that happening at 15 minutes is is late. Anyways, top, we've got a couple people going on our Faceless Void, who is going to attempt to portal out. He does. And he totally makes and it. And portals out. Yep. And then everyone TPs after out. him, and he dies. Where to TPs <laughs> after him? Is that what happens? No, he that. doesn't die. It looks like he got away scot free. Yeah. yeah. We nobody uh, else portals after him though. Muerta's wondering what happened to Amber and Luna and they're yep. they're taking the top T one instead of chasing. Right. And so she's just she just caught some farm. We went after her again. Again, no dice, and she's just kinda walking off through jungle. She's got her maelstrom already. Um this is kind of a sleeper build she's got. Uh there are a number of builds in this game that were, like, just fine right-click builds. But I feel like hers with uh, Bloodlust, Overload, Alt, Overload, Time Walk, Overload. You think like, it's that scary? Uh, yeah. Yeah, look, Snapfire just popped up and tried to explode her with and the surprise, went. surprise little shredder. And Time Walk, like, she was at just over half health when she got caught. And now and she's, she got full health. She ate the whole volley, and now she's back where she was. Um... Time Walk got picked 11th in this draft. I've seen Time Walk first picked a number of times. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I pick it first. Yeah, I feel like that got slept on this game, and Muerta ended up with a... In, in a game packed with people with, like, a couple good right-click abilities and one crowd control effect, uh, she got the one really great survival effect that, like, any of them Can I just say, though, like, with Muerta right now is Io, right? Now, the average, the average level right now for people is 9 and up. Except Io is level 7. And yet, he doesn't need to do much to get, you know, to get supporting. He yeah, uh, I think Io left uh, Luna to get the farm top. Luna just got blown up top by Snapfire and Ogre Magi. What uh, is Void meanwhile, doing? Faceless Void is fighting the entire enemy team mid. Yeah, and Io just did the Tether and Fest thing on Ember Spirit for the first time. And uh, I seem to remember this going quite badly for our team. Faceless, Faceless Void's here, you're here, Ogre Magi shows up. I'm like on my way through the jungle right now, although I am admittedly kind of late. And fighting two heroes between our two towers seems like we probably should do just fine. Nope. It, he's too big at the moment. That regen is 57 to 87 hits per second. That's outrageous. It's weird. I see him as having. Is it lower? I think it's oh no! Yeah, no. I see it now. It was showing as five HP per second for a minute there. So storm goes down. I killed a storm. And he relocates back here, and so you guys try to fight him again. But look, it's 56, 56, 57, and sometimes it's like. Okay, that's weird. It's jumping around for me, but yeah, it's a ton of health regen. This is why this combo's broken, and Io doesn't, like you said, Io is under-leveled, under-farmed, he's, like, working toward an axe, and, like, like for open one? Oh, no, for, for the shard spirits, uh, or the scepter spirits. Does that work when you're invested in someone? I don't think it does. I think it might, actually, because it kept coming back at one point, so I think it does. That's wild if that works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think but, it does. Yeah, I mean, this is such a weird playstyle because, like, he literally just is watching Ember Spirit play the game right now while he's parked inside him. Why does he have two ogre axes? I don't understand. I am? Does yeah. I have? Huh. Maybe just straight up strength is the way for him to get the most health regen? I mean, that's just not true. No, he just sold one. No. <laughs> oh, you just bought it by accident? Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Right. Good thing that's not going on the internet at all. So see, what I think happened, okay, I, I really want to say, and I might be wrong, but I think somebody coached him on what abilities to take, and I think this was a new player. That's just, that's just what I think. Because he, he's underleveled, he's buying things sporadically, and he just sits inside somebody. This feels I mean, like a boyfriend-girlfriend playing together. The girlfriend's never played. The boyfriend's like, yeah, do this. You're my support. Maybe. It's possible. Um, he is just AFK last hitting in mid right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, look. Saying. Look, a blade but of black. But he is going pretty. for Ag. But again, you know, he could be just told to go to for Ag. She. Uh... Also, just blasting off Fortune to the end without any channel time. Just insta-casting it. Yeah, it, he felt like a new player, but that didn't matter because of this build. Uh, yeah. I mean, this build is broken, um, but I've got to say, this Murta ended up kind of dominating. And I think a big part of that is that Murta's ult is completely broken. Yeah, it's a little stupid. I played with it for the first time the other day. And I was really oh, yeah? quite blown away with just how broken this is. I mean, for one thing, it gives you, like, infinitely scaling spell lamp after you get your shard. I didn't know about that. Uh, and when a hard stopper radiance build and was just slowly gaining increasing spell damage. Yeah, I think the shard um, is pretty pretty broken. It sure. gives you spell amp, or uh, spell lifesteal when you pop life it. Steal. So, as well as becoming untargetable, you heal a huge amount. Um, it feels a lot like Abaddon ult, but then it's also, yeah, exactly. 
Uh, although at the moment she take. just got that. caught. That. Yep, Perfect. just caught by Snapfire under tower in a Chronosphere. Now why would Ogre Magi TP into the Chrono? I don't know. But whatever. Well, that probably it, it worked out thanks to take the staff. I, I don't. Know. Yep. Um, this ogre played a support, so I don't want to talk trash, but uh, this was not the the greatest greatest player I've ever seen. Like, is that support with an echo saber? Yeah, I was about to say like he's got the mana boots, but then echo saber I'm and just, orb yeah. of venom and like some last hits in lane. Because he, he, he's trying to go for the, the um, what's what's it called? The thing that, that hooks um, har harpoon. harpoon. He just got it. Oh. Okay, maybe maybe Echo Saber is a support item now. If you're going to go for a Harpoon into a stun, I actually yeah. kind of like that. I forgot Harpoon exists. New items are new. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And, like, he TP'd to the fight when Snapfire was right fighting. Now. Like... I think Harpoon is an extraordinarily good item. Um, all stats, damage and attack speed, mana regen, and it, a gap its range close. range is a little short for me. Um, I get well, Aether Lens with it just to increase the range. This is intended to be a melee gap closer. Um, it's kind of like a budget option on one of the improved Blink Daggers. Um, I definitely played against, uh, I want to say Legion Commander, but it was just somebody with Duel. Yeah, that was a good harpoon. Go. Did you see that one? Yep, he just yeah. hit it, and it, it pulled Io right back into the pack. And and that's the thing I forget, too. Io. It does pull them back a little bit, like Chaos Strike. Uh, like Chaos, um, what's, what's the one? Uh, not Chaos, Chaos Strike, uh, Reality Rift. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow, I knew the name of an ability, and you got it wrong. You no did great, it's, Brian. No wonder it's so cold here. today. Oh, uh, is it is it that cold right now? Yeah, no, we had a little yeah. little cold streak here in California. Mm -hmm. It's been about seventy one degrees, so we all think we're dying and freezing to death. Yeah, it's ninety one degrees here, so you know. yeah, welcome to the desert. Arguably too warm. Snapfire yeah. comes out of invisibility to KS the what, jungle what's camp. With Ogre though, Ogre's doing some stuff. stuff. Going on. Oh yeah, Ogre just uh, CC Dio again. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The Death Ward killed him. The Relocate comes in. Yep. Ember uses Relocate to steal a Bounty Rune. Uh, he grabs me and then immediately gets relocated out. Fascinating. Very interesting <laughs> fight. Um, he has Radiance now. He has Radiance. Uh, okay, I know this is absurdly hypocritical, but I, I don't think that's a Radiance spell. <laughs> oh, I know. Hashtag never not Radiance. Alright, we've got Luna and Ogre Magi fighting. Intel heroes. I would never. Yeah, you totally done that before. Maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw it on a Shadow Demon once. That's... Maybe. Yep. And Darkseer, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, guilty. Um, but usually when I build a Radiance, I have some, like, items that go with Radiance, yeah, 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 or some abilities that go with Radiance. Well, we and... have Searing Chain, that feels good. Uh, right. He has Blade Fury, that also feels good in the damage protection Um He just got Omni Slashed, whoopsies. Um, this is right after I picked up my Daedalus, and I thought maybe I would be able to keep up with how tanky he's going to get. From oh. Tether and Fest. Yeah. Because I got this Daedalus, like, pretty early. It's like 25 minutes, and I've got Daedalus and Witchblade and Mask of Madness, and... I felt like I turned my farm around. I am, in fact, second place in net worth now, despite having a very rough start. Oh, somebody just died. Who was it? Luna just died bottom. Looks like Baseless Void <laughs> is still wrecking. I kind of thought maybe we could do it. We got the the feast doing max health damage. We got me with some crits. I thought maybe, but in the end, it didn't even matter. Now, now I know I, I know you guys you did the the draft without me, but what, what was what was the the thought process of, of your build on this time? Uh, I knew we had so we had two people apparently going support. We had an ogre magi, and you had first picked death word. 
So I knew you were going support. There was entirely too much right-click stuff on the board, and I was just looking at our hero lineup. And Ogre Magi could have tried to go right-click, uh, but I kind of just felt like I was the the one in the position to go for P3. Um, where did it just exploded you? Looks like she popped her ult to pull that off. Well, you know my my failing this game. My my failing this game was not getting starred for ags. That was that was my mistake. You needed that voodoo switcheroo, mm -hmm. and they proved brain swap so many times, and brain swap proof. Mm -hmm. Brain sap. Yeah, brain sap. Brain thing. You, you know what I mean though? Like that those two abilities would have saved me more often. Yeah, than this death word, which is, uh, I mean, we're doing okay as a team, but it, it, I don't think you have a ton of kills. Yeah, you're 2-3 right now, so. No, and I really didn't have the support behind it. Um, there was nobody frontlining when I was there. Ogre always was out of the fight. Yeah. Um, um, I really like your electric vortex. Yeah, and I'm trying to go for that ag, so I get that. I thought that the crowd control would help me get the kills, but... Um... Yeah, I would think also that this is a build that really wants a blink. I don't know, I, I never position well with Death Worth. That is not an ability I'm well-versed in. And maybe yeah, you, just like the ag or the shard the is way that's, more important. That's more, that's more effective. I, I think the issue was, too, I got countered pretty hard by Martha. Because I don't know if you know this, and, and your viewers might not. While a spell, a uh, death ward is, it is not magic damage. Oh, it, it attacks. Right. Summons a deadly ward to attack enemy heroes. Yep. So her and alt the... yeah, so. dodges death ward, is what you're saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That. It's pretty rough. That is mean. Uh, so we've got a few heroes hanging out uh, bottom right now. Where the uh, where the Ember Spirit has relocated in, and he seems to have an IO with him. But uh, yeah, no, it's just it's too much regen. It like really looks like he's about to go down there, um, and it gets close. But then Muerta shows up and just cleans house on all the damage he got off. Um, and you were totally right. Spirits works. Spirits infest. Totally works. It does. Uh, oh, I remembered it because well, they went away after he hit me, and then they came back, and I was like, excuse me? Oh, well, that's just the axe. They just constantly spawn. Um, and while it is the Ember Spirit with Io and him frontlining and breaking up our formations and getting damage on everybody, uh, Muerta is the one cleaning house right now. Um, and I noticed... A couple solid attack speed items. It's kind of like a stock standard right-click carry build. You know, Maelstrom, Orchid, Shadow Blade. Like, nothing surprising there. But it is quite good. Uh, the mana regen from Orchid lends itself really well to her being able to spam Bloodlust and Time Lock, which are already, like, not super high mana requirements. And it looks like she's going for a Glipner next for that crowd control. Seems good. All right, there's a fight not brewing top. There's a fight brewing so top. What, what is happening? Oh no, out of our favor. Like we just exactly. we just lost a big team fight, and that's the first time we've had like a real fail this game. Uh, <laughs> Ember just got relocated out of his engaged top. Uh, no, it's it's the tether. Let's let's look at Io. I bet if we look at Io, the answer is there. Uh, he got his ags. So the spirits are up all the time. This actually doesn't provide that much regen yet, because Io doesn't have any health regen. Nope. But like even with no it's health regen items. Per click. It's 140 per click. It's still Yeah, even with no items. Like once he gets hard is when this is supposed to turn insane. But even with no regen items, Io is You just didn't have the damage. Uh, yeah, no, I just got, like, most of a full Omni Slash off, and any attacks I missed still hit him because of Moonglaives. And I right. didn't even get through... I got through, you know, two-thirds of his life, uh, and that probably would have been enough damage to kill him, but he's just regening throughout the, the cast. And right about that moment, I was, I was like, we have 
let this get out of control. And it's funny because we didn't we didn't really do anything wrong. Like we were totally winning this game. I mean, I think this is a big part of what's going wrong this game is that like we are all taking swing like Snapfire just did her thing and got through like a quarter of his life. His life dipped a little bit when you hit him with the death ward. Yeah, he got pretty low Snapfire when I omni slashed him. Right, but all three of those things happened totally separately. And now, uh, now this Storm Spirit with the Ball Lightning Nightmare is able to get some CC down and give Myrta and Ember time to just pick our team apart. And that's two big team fights lost in a row. And like just like that, the, the kill gap has closed. They're up 7k all of a sudden. Yeah, they had Lincoln Spear too, so gonna be able to hold him and stuff and stuff. He was ready to get rip, rip, rip. And yeah, look, he's just running high grounds, getting under our T3. Any life. And just totally fine. Void is awesome. Doesn't have any damage. And that's not even true. Like, Faceless Void did great this game. He was fourth. He was like fourth. One a minute ago, and now he's four three. The hell. Yeah, no, now it, it's not enough damage. So it's not like he doesn't have damage items. He's got Manta Style and Battle Fury and a Basher. He's got a Hand of Midas. He had some pretty good farm early. He's still the top of net worth despite these last two fights being lost. But like, yeah, the the Ember Spirit just turned completely invincible, um, and then the Muerta with Time Lock is also pretty hard to kill. Like between Time really Lock and her all. And... Yeah, no, two so of them just totally turned to mortal. It's Tether and Fest on the Ember Spirit, making Ember invincible. And it's Time Lock and Pierce the Veil on Werta, making Werta invincible. And suddenly we just can't fight these guys anymore. Healing for a portion of the max hit points every second while inside. Exploding for the host body, we know that part. But yeah, so he's healing for the max eight hit points. I think that makes sense. I mean, that seems scary. Infest. Infest doesn't. Uh, so I mean, it's ability draft. So there are dumb combos, and this is one of the more dumb combos really out fun. there. Because like, yeah, this game just got turned on its head so hard in the last six minutes. Like two big team fights, and we just got dumpstered. And we had we totally been crushing this game. Like things were going so well, and then these two just turned completely immortal eventually. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I do get a death ward uh, in a second off of uh, from Fountain with Ags that does. Do pretty well. Oh yeah, they all they all end up coming into the fountain, and. Yeah, you death ward, I omni slash. We like finally get our team combo off, but it's way too late. Like our it's our ancient is losing health as we speak. Where to goes alt, goes in. Everybody else goes in too. Yeah, here comes the omni slash. There's a chronosphere. That's all very cute. I love that where is <laughs> just just outside the chronosphere. She eventually goes down. The ancient goes down. All right. If you've been watching, thanks for watching. I had fun that game until, you know, the end, where it all where it all went awry. Uh, if you want more, I stream Tuesdays and Thursday nights. You can find the extended versions on my Patreon page. And good luck. Have fun. Don't die. I will catch you in the next one. Let's Laters. go to the post game.